and welcome back to Open Your Eyes on this lovely Wednesday morning. Uh, so far, so good. Two wonderful conversations, and we're about to jump on into our third and final conversation for the morning. Diabetes or Belize Diabetes Association Juvenile Diabetes Summer Camp. Summer is here, and this is definitely the opportunity to take advantage of what they've got. In to tell us about it, we've got Ms. Desiree Daniels, who is the president, the newly elected <laughs> president of the Belize Diabetes <laughs> Association. Uh, on, uh, to the end is uh, Anthony Castillo, who is a diabetes educator. I like that. Yeah. And in the middle is Aisha Garbutt, who uh, actually, <coughs> she's got type 1 diabetes. So now we're about to find out exactly what that is and, you know, what it is like living with that. But guys, good morning and welcome. Good morning. Well, good morning. Nice morning. to have you in. You're feeling the Wednesday morning, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly so. Now, as a, as a diabetes educator, uh, Mr. Anthony Castillo, talk to us about it. We are seeing here and shedding light on type 1 diabetes. diabetes. What is that? Yes, John. Uh, thanks for having us uh, here this morning. Um, we're talking diabetes. We're talking diabetes summer camp. Mm -hmm. uh, but first of all, I'd like to begin by saying what is actually diabetes, yes. right? Uh, it's a condition where the body do not produce any insulin or produces very little insulin or is unable to use the insulin that the body produces. Mm -hmm. <coughs> if any of these conditions are present, then it can be said that you're living with diabetes. Mm -hmm. However, this morning we're focusing on type 1 diabetes and there are several types of diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's type 1, uh, there's type 2, and there's also gestational diabetes. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, uh, right. br br break those down for right. us? Right, good. Uh, type 1. Type 1 is mainly found in children and young adults. Uh, this is a condition, it's an autoimmune condition mm -hmm. where the body do produce insulin, but the beta cells uh, within the pancreas destroys the insulin. It's unable to use the insulin. Mm. So in this, in this case, uh, persons living with type 1 diabetes, as I said, children and young adults, mm. uh, is immediately placed on insulin. They need to take an insulin shot daily for their survival. And at this time, because there is no cure for diabetes, that will be for the remainder of their lives. Hence the reason the importance of having diabetes youth camp for type 1. Mm. This is a condition you'll be carrying for the re remainder of your life. Wow. And as a child and as a young person, it can be challenging. However, you'll be hearing from Aisha, who is a type 1, and what? she'll explain to you what is it like to live with diabetes. And while, Let me while, move while we're on that, what is type 2? Type 2, yeah, I move on to type 2. Type 2 is mainly found in adults. Right? It's a lifestyle condition. Uh, you started off, your pancreas is fully functioning. It could be because of hereditary. If you have a grandparent, a parent who had diabetes, mm -hmm. chance that you can develop the condition. Mm -hmm. However, you could develop it on your own, one healthy lifestyle. We do not exercise. We do not always eat right. And these are some of the factors which should now trigger um, diabetes. Um, the more carbs we load upon, the more sugary stuff we load upon, the more uh, insulin the pancreas need to make. And after eating unhealthy for a number of years, when you reach your late 30s, 40s, diabetes kick in, the pancreas get tired. It's starting to uh, produce less insulin. Mm. Right? And the body, um, it do not have adequate amount of insulin to process the foods that we're eating. So we're not eating healthy, right? We're not exercising, mm -hmm. right? And there you put a strain on your pancreas and your pancreas start uh, producing less and less insulin. And uh, hence the reason that old fella kicks in, diabetes. And, and the third one? Third one, gestational diabetes, mm -hmm. which is found in women, um, usually when they become pregnant. When they become pregnant, diabetes shows up. Uh, however, in a number of cases, it goes away after the baby is born, but that's a red flag for women, red flag, right? It can come back in a number of women. Uh, it come back after the baby is born, a few a few years after. Hmm. I myself uh, living with type two diabetes uh, over 25 years uh, wow. with type two diabetes. I started off on uh, oral medication. Then uh, a few years ago, like about 15 years ago, I was placed on insulin injection because the oral medication was unable to control my uh, uh, glucose level within my body, right? And I also like to say to the general public, there is no good and bad kind of diabetes. Mm -hmm. If you're on insulin, they would say, oh, you have the bad kind, can you have to take injection? <laughs> there is no good and bad kind of diabetes. So th there's different way to treat the same condition. Yeah. yeah. Right? So as I was saying, uh, we're having a diabetes summer camp, and it's important for us to inform and educate our children uh, on the condition. Um, usually when a person is diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, 
within our household. Sometimes the parents have never heard of a child living with diabetes yeah. because people like to say that it's an old people condition. Right? Well, that's a perception. Yeah. That's right. what people think. Yeah, that's what they say. It's an old people condition. So, so within a household, when a child <coughs> is diagnosed with diabetes, it's anybody into panic. Everybody into panic. Now, what can I do? My picture only one diabetes, but no. Uh, at this time, we have over 60 young people throughout the country living with diabetes. So annually, we try to bring these uh, children and young adults together in a diabetes camp in a mm -hmm. fun and educational way mm -hmm. to learn of the condition, how you cope with it, mm -hmm. and also to meet other children who are living with the condition. Right, and you form a support group among yourself, the, right, and you speak. The educational factor, I think, is very important. I, um, one of the things you touch on, which to, me, which to me is striking, is that people feel, the perception is that you have to hold for got diabetes. Yeah. You, you can't young and got diabetes because no. you're actually working out, your right. body is actually active. <coughs> and so to know that we are about to have this camp, to talk to talk to young people about about it is very important. Mm -hmm. Just let me plug this in. Sure. Usually, type one diabetes is found in children and young adults. But what is frightening is when young people develop type two diabetes, which is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. All right. This is frightening for us because a young person averagely should not say develop type two diabetes due to lifestyle. Mm -hmm. If a young person uh, continue to, to, to live unhealthy, um, eating unhealthy, not exercising, they can develop. And we've seen where a young person develop type 2 diabetes, which is not good. Because right. the lifestyle of today is totally different from mm. yesterday. <laughs> and a lot of people might tell you or feel as well, um, you drink too much sweet thing, you eat too much salt, <laughs> thing you want to develop some <laughs> diabetes. Is that so? Um, to a certain extent, because if, all those, you should eat a balanced diet. So if you're loading up on just one food group, especially your carbohydrates and, and, and your sweets and so on, mm -hmm. you put a pressure on your, your pancreas, which will demand more insulin from your pancreas to break down all these unhealthy food that you're consuming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you continue to load up on those, your heart's going to make more insulin. After a time, the pancreas get tired. Mm -hmm. All right, you won't be able to produce that yeah. level of insulin to balance off whatever you're consuming. Carb. Then you're not exercising as well. Carb, sweet things. Uh, uh, we know that you know. Yeah, that, those, that, those, that, those are the culprits. <laughs> those are the culprits. So, 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 question here is that. So, what about for folks who are vegans or, or vegetarians? <laughs> what about what about these people? Vege vegetarians are good. You know, Aisha would call to you directly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what what we say to people: eat from all the food groups. I should have brought a plate to show you how you should consume your meals. In, in our plate, per se, daily, we load up on carbs a whole lot of rice. I'm going to leave it. We bet uh, you don't yeah, yeah, yeah. enough rice. This is your shortage. <laughs> 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 right? So we should eat more veg, mm -hmm. fruit, fruits and veg, right? And a smaller portion. But what we also say to our people, once you develop diabetes, mm -hmm. we refer you to a dietitian and nutritionist to show you exactly what is portion size. You eat yeah. by portion size. Portion size. Right. Well, check, check out Mr. Rice and Beans. <laughs> yeah, we, there, was a, there, was a, there was a pick up a while ago with Mr. Rice and <coughs> Beans. So what do you say about this? Right. This is the Belizean staple. We eat this every day. Right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I wish I could turn it around. We should what? I wish I could turn it around. That, <laughs> that lot of rice. <laughs> <laughs> so, not a lot of rice. So, rice and beans is okay. It, rice and beans is cool. Not a lot of rice. Mm -hmm. I always to be. I myself live with dairy. I eat almost anything, but then I eat plenty. Ah. Ah. That's the key. I eat rice and beans, ah, but in, portion. in small portions. Portion. Half cup, one cup. You don't need more than that. Then you load up on your veggies. Right, mm -hmm. but it's a condition which there's where education comes in. All right, so speaking of education, we've got the president in with us who can elaborate <laughs> much more on it. Um, we have Aisha in as well, and we definitely want to hear about the type 1 diabetes. But, Miss President, talk to us. Hi, good morning. Thanks for having us here. Mm -hmm. um, we will be having our annual youth summer camp next week, the okay. 15th to the 19th of July. And the camp normally runs from 7 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. Why 7 in the morning? Because we feed all the campers. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we bring them in from early to have breakfast. We serve them breakfast, mm -hmm. mid-morning snack, afternoon lunch, afternoon snack. Okay. So that they have a week of eating healthy food uh -huh. every day. Uh -huh. 
So they could take back that lifestyle at home. Where's this camp? The camp will be held at IT Vet Compound. Mm -hmm. You said it. Um, <coughs> from IT Vet on Freetown Road. On Freetown. Yes. I can't miss it. So, cannot miss it. <laughs> mm -hmm. For registration of any type ones who would like to come to the camp, could go to our office corner, Central American Boulevard and Mahogany Street, mm -hmm. or call 203-3333. Mm -hmm. The camp is for type ones to learn how to take care of themselves. So only for management. Type, only for, for, for children um, living, with, living type with type one, one diabetes. diabetes. Right. Children and young adults. And, and young, young adults. adults. So right. what are we what are we what are we talking here when it comes to age range? Um, we have registration from six year old to twenty six year old. Bye, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> Me too. Sorry <laughs> to say. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the ones who are presently <coughs> registered so far. Okay. They mm -hmm. come w this year. We will be having election for the for our youth arm of Belize Diabetes Association, mm -hmm. and these youths will form a support group to meet more often than once a year. Okay. Uh, the camp will also have a counseling session for the youths on depression, anxiety, and self self esteem, okay. so that they can love themselves and take care of themselves, yeah. which is very important. A lot of our young people are facing depression. So we find that very important because sometimes they become depressed due to the lifestyle yes. change. And they will also be learning how to cope with the lifestyle sure. change as well. So they will get counseling on that as well. Okay. Yep. The camp will also, um, also entails education on learning how diabetes affects the body when you fall into complications because diabetes affects the eyes, well, like Mr. Castillo will say, from the head to the toes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have the brain, the eye, the ear, the teeth, the heart, the kidneys, the feet, the nerves, throughout your body, pain. So they will learn how to cope along with, cope that. Along yeah. with <coughs> that, the lifestyle as well. Wow. The, we, one of our highlights this year will be a moonlight walk which will be held on full moon night, the 16th of July, that is next week, Tuesday. Rain or shine. Oh. Rain or shine, <laughs> 6 o'clock in the evening, yes. from Memorial Park, down Marine Parade, to DJ Park, BTL okay. Park, right. formerly BTL Park. Yeah. DJ is our main sponsor for this walkathon. Mm -hmm. It's to create awareness about type 1 diabetes. Yeah as well as to raise funds for type 1 diabetics as well. Okay. So that will be one of the main highlights. So we're asking families and friends to come out and support the walk. Which leads mm. me to, um, to, um, to, 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 to Aisha. Uh, let's, talk, let's, let's talk about how old are you? I am 17 years old. Okay. And um, I've, been, I've been diagnosed with diabetes for the past eight years. April that went made it eight years that what, I've been diagnosed with diabetes. What is what is what is your lifestyle like? <coughs> let's get back to let's go back to eight years ago. You're seventeen, so you were probably about nine of nine that time. Yeah, yeah. When when you when you heard that you know you're diagnosed with type one diabetes, what was it like for you? What was your thought at the time in the family? Well, for me it wasn't really anything because I didn't know I wasn't aware of this condition and I was young you know I it didn't really bother me mm -hmm. but for my mom it was something shocking to her mm -hmm. um, I could remember when I went to the clinic mm -hmm. and I got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes my mom was like she was in shock for about two weeks she couldn't believe it and when we went for the test she asked the nurse three times please check the test over mm -hmm. and she was like no my daughter cannot have this because i guess i um inherited it from my grandmother mm -hmm. so she thought she would have been the one to, to you know, inherit it, yes. it. Mm -hmm. but sadly i'm the one <laughs> what led what led you guys to the to the medical center to actually get that test was, was it because you, were li uh, you, you started to feel you bad? See, you know, what, what, what got you there? Well, I was small, but I started to get smaller. <laughs> and I was always hungry, always thirsty, and I was always tired. 
It doesn't matter how much I sleep, I'm always tired. And school, school, well, a teacher who's known, mm -hmm. um, her name is Miss Nelsa Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, I was in Sunday 3 at that time, and I was always an A plus student. And she, she to noticed notice, that yeah. Aisha has been using the bathroom frequently. And this is not her. Mm. So I remember one Friday she told me, Aisha, um, can I talk to you? I told her, show this. And she said, um, what is going on with you? And I told her, nothing. <laughs> I'm fine. She said, no. I said, you're getting smaller. You're using bathroom a lot. And you're missing out on important concepts that you should be getting, right? And I said, yes, ma'am. I said, so just promise me that you're going to go to the hospital. And I was like, yes, ma'am, sure thing. I'm going to go. And that Friday, my mom decided to go to the hospital because she had a severe pain and at the back of her neck. And I was like, mom, my teacher said that I need to go to the hospital. And that was when I found out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then after you found out, growing up with the disease as a young teenager and stuff, how, what was that experience like? Well, growing up with the disease, um, at first, I felt like, you know, I'm different. Mm -hmm. I'm different from everyone else. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was something that I cannot, I couldn't go out there and share with others because they might have looked at me a different way or maybe they might have talked about me and say hurtful things about me. Mm -hmm. So at first, when I found out, I tried my best to, you know, keep it in, keep it in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I should have friends and we should go on a date or go somewhere, just us, I would eat like them, do everything like them. I wouldn't even care because, I mean, your friends notice everything, right? They'll yeah. be like, yeah. why aren't you eating this? Why aren't you eating that? And I would just eat what I want until I go home and my mom would, Aisha, you cannot be doing this. Aisha, you cannot be doing that. But it was hard for me because before I found out that I was a diabetic, I was a sweet lover and I am still a sweet <laughs> lover. <laughs> I would lie about it. And I eat very big. So that's that 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 is still difficult for me mm -hmm. to do. Because sometimes, especially with my mom, she's always worried about me. Mm -hmm. I said when you go somewhere you need to do this and you need to do that. But I used to feel that, you know what, I can eat everything and I can do anything. Once I have my insulin, that's just my little life. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, but lately I've been noticing certain things and I've been feeling certain things um, slowly but surely. I've been telling others about my condition and, you know, feeling more courageous to share it with yeah, others. Yeah, so. yeah. But where, where, you know, it, I like the fact that you are sharing about your condition. But where did you generate the courage to? And I'm asking this question because, you know, Madam <coughs> President and Mr. Cass, there are a lot of people out there who are so afraid. But at the same time, they just need that avenue. And that's mm -hmm. the reason for the question. W at what point did you develop that confidence to share with people? Um, at the camp. Mm -hmm. When I first went there in 2012, I felt, you know, it felt weird because I didn't really know anyone there. and. When I started to go every day, frequently, for the week, you know, um, the other, my other colleagues who are just like me, who are diabetics, they started to talk, hey, talk to you and ask you certain things and, you know, they shared their experiences with me and it kind of led me to feel a little better and, I mean, over the past years, it helped me a lot, especially, I'm not sure if it was 20... 15 or 2016 mm -hmm. when Miss um, Des, she, she quoted something in the room, um, I think it was a Tuesday morning, I'm not sure, and she said, um, um, knock out diabetes, don't let diabetes knock you out, mm -hmm. you knock it out. And I went home and I told my mom, I told her, mom, you know what, I want to um, have my little lunch and I want you to start doing what you were doing for me when I didn't want you to do it. And she said, what? Oh my gosh, what changed your mind? <laughs> and I told her, I said, Miss Des, and she was like, who is Miss Des? And I started, so I started to talk to her about Miss Des, and she was like, I'm happy for that. She said, this camp is healthy. 
And I was like, yes, mom, it's helping because I think I'm ready to knock out diabetes. Wow. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, I, you know, such a touching story, and I, I do hope that a lot of people utilize the camp. We said that we're catering for how many, how many um, children? 60. 60. 60. And has that been uh, a constant, has we, have we seen a constant growth in terms of the amount of children who uh, attend the camp? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. And like Aisha said, this is the purpose of the camp because the children <coughs> learn how to take their own insulin, they learn to monitor their glucose level morning, afternoon, night, because we, evening, because we always do it at the camp every day. Mm -hmm. So throughout the week, they learn these things to, for a better self-care. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, and they learn to eat healthy and they take it back home to their parents as well. As uh, Madam President rightly said, um, we model what proper eating should be like at the camp. Hence the reason for the breakfast, the, the snacks, the lunch, Right, and the snacks again. Um, the early part of the camp, when we just began this camp, we used to invite the parents to come with us as well to the camp. Um, uh, we, we are also into conflict with the parents where we are modeling proper eating at the camp at IT Vet. And right across from IT Vet, we have a very popular <laughs> spot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right? extremely popular. <laughs> exactly. So they would go over and get their lunch over there mm -hmm. and bring it back to the camp. And I almost like I was foaming. <laughs> right? You can't have this here. You need to go over there. With that that, right? And, and that stuff away. like that. So we insist that our children should learn how to eat properly. Uh, hence the reason for education. Right? And one of the things that we'll be focusing on is going into the schools. Um, I used to have a good story at her school. She had no complication, but there are other children who suffer and, and have challenges in, in school. Mm -hmm. One of the things when you're living with type 1 diabetes, there are times when you need to visit the bathroom more frequently. frequently. Mm -hmm. And the teacher will say, you just got in the bathroom, you can't go again. Mm -hmm. That child needs to go. Whenever he or she asks you, he needs to go. And then there's high levels of sugar and there's low levels of sugar, mm -hmm. high sugar, hypoglycemia, when your sugar starts and drop. As a person living with the, especially type 1 diabetes, you need to address it immediately. How do you address that? That person would need to have an intake of sugar, uh, sugary stuff, maybe uh, uh, some soda, um, orange juice to bring up back your sugar level. Mm -hmm. Thereafter, you could eat something. Mm -hmm. But then again, our rules in school, you can't eat in school. Mm -hmm. So here's where we want to go into the schools and inform and educate our teachers and mm -hmm. our principals that if you have a child living with diabetes in their class, these are some of the side effects, these are some of the things that will happen, and to allow that child. Right? You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm so glad that you bring that up because one of the things that sensitization is very important, oh, uh, you know, and then people, you've got to empathize with families, right. you know, you've got to do that. And then if, if teachers would know these children exactly. and know their lifestyle <coughs> and what it, what it takes for them to live that way, right. then I think they empathize with them. Exactly. But for me, a lot of people might find it to be expensive living with diabetes. Is it expensive? Not necessarily so. And as I said, it's eating a balanced diet. Mm -hmm. Right. When they have diet, people eat. Yeah, 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 yeah. From, from all the food groups. Eating. Yes, from all the food groups. As I said, we would refer our children to our dietitian and nutritionist to show them exactly what is a balanced diet and how you should eat. Today's day and age, today's day and age uh, Cass, Ms. President, and Aisha, one of the things that we're giving to our children uh, as, as a part of the babysitting tactic is for them to eat chips. Eat a lot of sweet. Yes. You want fried chicken, make you, make you relax, no, eat noodles. a fried chicken. <coughs> noodles. You know, you know, you, because that's what they want. They're actually right. craving that salt from the noodles. Right. Uh, craving the fact that, it, that the, you know, that flour yeah, intake from the noodles. The sweets, yes. And we're that doing this true. as a part of the babysitting tactics right. just to get our right. way. Right. What yeah. do we say to these parents in terms of uh, dealing with the situation? Again, education is education for everyone, mm -hmm. right? We could target the teachers, the principals, the students in school, right? But we need to do more outreaches, right, into the community, mm -hmm. right? And where we'd be able to capture um, the, the, the average person. Mm -hmm. However, the Belize Diabetes Association meets every third Saturday after month at IT Vet. And these meetings is not necessarily for persons living with diabetes. Anybody could attend, mm -hmm. right? So we invite the general public com to come in. and. Uh, 
at our meetings, we have healthcare professionals who come in with us and share on the various conditions. Mm -hmm. As Madam President said a while ago, um, diabetes they affect the eyes, uh, mm -hmm. they affect the tooth, right? They affect the heart, the kidney, right down to when, when you get amputated. Mm -hmm. So whenever you come to our meeting, you learn after condition. So um, here I'm inviting the general public to join us every third Saturday of the month at 4 p.m. at ITV to come and learn of this condition. Every third it, it, Saturday, Saturday. Uh, Saturday of the month. A little bit on statistics, 14.2% of Belize's adult population is said to be living with diabetes. Over wow. 50,000 Belizeans and they do not mm -hmm. always know. And I think that they, they said when you go to the doctor and you're diagnosed with diabetes, they are saying that you had it like four years ago. Mm -hmm. You're just right. diagnosed now. You're just so diagnosed with just that, diagnosed that could now. be, I imagine that's also part of the education, knowing how to, what are the signs. What are the signs? When right. you should go <coughs> consult a doctor. Exactly. Which, which leads, uh, you know, and, I, and I'm glad that you brought that up, but which leads to the signs. So if you're noticing these things about your body, then you need to go and check, uh, and check, check up. Check what right. are these signs? So are these signs are uh, loss of weight. You're not exercising, you're not doing any, you're not, you're, you're not <laughs> dieting, but they start losing weight drastically. Mm -hmm. That could be a sign. Mm -hmm. uh, being hungry, as what they used to say earlier. Some people, they get hungry, some people, they lose appetite. Mm -hmm. Right? You get, then frequent thirst, like dehydration, mm -hmm. right? But so you consume the water, so you go to the so bathroom. You go to bathroom. Mm -hmm. bathroom, right? Dehydration. And, I, and I, it might seem normal because then if I had to drink a lot of water, no, chances yeah. are the body needs for yeah. excrete. Yeah. And but, so but that's that, that one day. But, but it's excess. You're really thirsty. Like, they guys would say, like, you drink, you have a go, my man. <laughs> 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 a, a lot of water. Right? A lot of water. So, yeah. um, um, last of wheat. With less of wheat. Last of appetite or, 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 or in, increase appetite. Increase yeah, yeah. appetite. Right. Uh -huh. uh -huh. What so, else? Um, you may have sores, especially on feet, that, that, that do not heal. Weak, tiredness, drowsy, right? lack of energy. Mm -hmm. You're consuming a lot of food, but you still don't have energy. The body is not using it. So you feel lazy. You yeah. feel lazy. Uh -huh. In some children and young adults, they may have bedwetting. You already passed a phase already, but they come back. Oh. You stand up with bed. That, that is found in children and young, and young adults who are then diagnosed with diabetes. So all these signs the parents need to know. Because mm -hmm. then the parents, some of the rough parents, will like, oh, you start a peep, yes, and you're yes, not going to pass yes, them. Yes. Right? And these are some telltale signs. So we have a number of signs. And then uh, for adults, again, it can be blurred vision as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and unable to see properly. Yeah. So if any of these are present, it's time for you to go seek. and check. Yeah, yeah. Go, go and check. But we as a people, like, if you're not broke, not fix it. Right? <laughs> We need to check at least annually. Yes. Right? But then we have to wait until something happens, then we go and check. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you go and check annually, you can pick up on some of these chronic conditions because they come sneakingly. And you know, there's heavy alcohol consumption, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. people don't know that uh, the sugar intake is, <laughs> is extreme. Right. It might taste differently, but at the same Al time, the sugar intake is extreme. Right. And yes. alcohol is sugar as well. Mm -hmm. Alcohol is sugar. So that again, people will say, well, um, I don't really drink uh, the, the lower class li liquor. I, I will have whiskey and so yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's still alcohol, John. It, it is. It is still alcohol. It is. Uh, you know, one of the things that came to mind, and, and, I, and I know that uh, time is not on our side, but especially for, uh, you know, and I, I, feel a, I feel a certain way just saying it out like that, but lower income families. Right. They will tell you, you know what, all we could afford is the fried chicken, yeah. only three dollars. Exactly. And but the thing is, it is food. Yeah, it, but yeah. we don't know what's in that food. Yeah. So yeah. What, what what what's your advice? What's a, you know advice to these families that there <coughs> there there are things that we could you you don't even have to pay much. You could do your outside garden. Right. You know, yeah. you could do your backyard garden and exactly. get your veggies there. What do we I, advise these people? To I'm do? so glad you bring that up, John. Um, from that little income that you have, if you use it wisely, mm -hmm. right? If you have a backyard garden, right? And you invest more on your fruits and veg, it will help, mm -hmm. right? But first you have to know, you have to have the knowledge. Yes. If I consume this, this could happen, yes. right? So then you can make proper choices, mm -hmm. right? So again, it has to do with education, educating these persons, and from there, they'll be able to make proper choices for themselves. Madam President, uh, final words? Yes, so I would just like to advise parents of type 1, di persons living with type 1 diabetes to come bring them out to the, um, to the summer camp. camp so that they could be around children and young adults who are like them so that they could learn more about the condition diabetes. Yeah, yeah. Aisha, um, <laughs> life, 
<laughs> well, my last what, what word would, yes, yes. What would, would be, be your advice? Um, to the general public, prevention is better than cure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much, okay. man. Inspiration, you know. Yeah. Inspiration. Yes. Mr. Cass, your final word. Yes, then. Um, we have ongoing registration for persons living with type 1, type 1 diabetes at our office. Unfortunately, there are still some parents who don't want others to know that their child is living with di diabetes. I wish they could come across that, come to our office, and there are benefits to register with us. There are supplies that we offer freely to the children living with type 1 diabetes. Some, you have a child living with type 1 diabetes, come to our office, get registered, and sort of get the information and education you need to cope with this condition, because it's, like, it's a like lifelong condition. And definitely, we mm -hmm. want for families to know that it's not the end of life. Exactly. You know, it's not the end of life. Exactly. I always say that, you know what, um, most of us, in order for us to continue with life, somebody has to tell a story. And that's what we've got, Aisha Floor. Right. That's what we've got you for. So, yes, Desiree, thank you so very much. Mr. Anthony Castillo, yes, thank you so very much. Aisha, we wish you well, and thank you so very much. But we have got to uh, take a break, and when we come back, it will be for the wrap-up. So stay with us.